I made a friend. He's on a hog. I don't think he considers me a friend, but I'm calling him a friend. I also get the feeling that he thinks he's a lot cooler than me. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, I don't know. But all I know, I've, I've been staying with him for about seven kilometers now through traffic. But he hasn't gotten away from me and I know that he's using a hell of a lot more fuel than I am. So, oh, does he have to stop at the fuel station? Oh, no, he's fine, he's fine. He's fine. He'll get the next one, you know. This cylinder is from my Yamaha YZ250. I took my dirt bike apart to do a quick top end rebuild only to discover that my cylinder is actually damaged. So now I need to get it repaired. And the place I need to take it to to be repaired is about an hour away from me. So instead of sitting in a car for two hours, I thought I should try and turn it into a bit of a ride on my KTM Duke. And since I'm doing that, I figured I may as well take you guys with me. I'm not sure if putting a cylinder in a backpack is the best idea. Probably gonna get uncomfortable. Maybe we should wrap it in a towel. I think we should do that. Except that all I have in the workshop is an apron. So that's, that's gonna have to do. I'm sure it'll work. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've got the cylinder from the workshop, I think we need a drop of fuel because I'm currently flashing in the red. It says I've got about 30 kilometers to go, which isn't gonna cut it today. Okay, that is much better. Now we can do 330 kilometers, which it's exaggerating about, but we'll take it. So our first stop is actually a motorbike shop because first we need to also pick up a piston. And that's 33 minutes away or 40 kilometers. So we wouldn't have even got there on a tank or on what we had left. Let's do this. So I actually ordered a piston a week ago today, last week, Monday, from a local shop to me. And uh, they claimed they had to order it, but it would be there within two or three days, which was fine. And I expected to have it at the latest by Saturday. Today's Monday, a week later, and I still haven't heard anything from them. So last night, I dug around a bit on the interwebs and found that a shop 30 minutes away from me, which isn't too bad, has one in stock. So I phoned them this morning to see if I could come and buy it. And they said, sure, we want your money like most shops do. So that's where we have to go first. It's kind of on the way to where we have to take the cylinder, so it's not too bad, but it is gonna be further than just going straight to the cylinder place. But what are you gonna do? We need a piston so that the cylinder can be properly sized to it. That way, the dude says he can just check his work, and I assume I get the best cylinder ever or something. And if there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I absolutely hate traffic. So it's 10 to nine in the morning, don't believe this clock it's always running fast I don't know why I think my battery's just too good but it's 10 to 9 hopefully traffic's died down I suspect the highway is gonna be a nightmare but we'll just make it work oh boy I think I found the traffic already pretty much okay it's thinning out here but back there terrible so I do have my phone here for a GPS it's on the SP connect mount which works well because I have no idea where I'm going uh, but I am terrified that my phone's battery dies. It's on about 92% right now, but it's gonna die pretty quickly. And if it dies before I get there, I'm screwed. If it dies after I drop my cylinder off, I don't really care because as long as my cylinder's being worked on, I'm happy. But as you can see, at the moment it's locked to try and save a bit of battery because I do know where I'm going until I need to find my off-ramp, so soon. This is definitely not the bike for this kind of journey. But I don't have any friends with me on foster bikes, so it'll be okay. We'll still have a bit of fun. So like I said, I had already ordered a piston from a different shop. So I do feel bad going to buy a piston from the shop I didn't order it from. But at the same time, they didn't charge me a deposit or make me pay for it or anything. And uh, they've been very useless. And uh, it's a YZ250 piston. It's gonna be pretty easy to sell. So I don't feel that bad, but I, I still do feel bad. Okay, this is more the 390 Duke speed off the highway. Now, it's in its own. Okay, maybe a bit faster than this. A bit of a cheeky U-turn. And we are here. Let's go grab a piston. That's what people do. Now, that was a much cooler shop and they had almost everything I needed. So here we've got a brand new piston. I'm going to say this wrong, but... 
Wozna is my English interpretation. We also got an air filter because they actually had one in stock and it's always good to have a new air filter. And we got a complete gasket set because they didn't just have the top end. But all of those will come in handy. Now we just have to figure out how to fit that into a backpack that's already filled with a cylinder. Luckily an air filter squashes nicely. This is going well. Perfect. Now to choose our next destination. We're on 77% battery so we used a fair bit just to get here. The next trip is going to be longer. 40 minutes, 63 kilometers. Let's do it. The only thing they didn't have in stock that I'm still missing is the small end bearing. They will have that there by Friday. So we get to do this ride again. But that time we won't have to go all the way to the cylinder shop. I hope I can remember these directions in 41 kilometers turn right. That's quite a way off. I might get bored. Especially since 120, we're revving at almost 8,000 RPM. And we cap out at about 10,000. Yeah. Let's talk about the cylinder that's in my backpack. So I put out the video disassembling it and discovering the chip in the cylinder. And I haven't read all the comments, I'll be honest, because comments are sad. But I know a couple of people spoke about re-sleeving or sleeving their cylinders, but they never mentioned what bike. I suspect it's old bikes, because as far as I know, you can't sleeve a YZ250 cylinder. It has to be repaired and replated. It has a nickel coating, which is a fancy nickel and silicon coating, I believe. All of this could be wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, it's basically an anti-friction coating so that the piston slides up and down very beautifully. You make more power, it lasts a bit longer. It's all very glorious. Uh, so that's why you have to go to someone that knows what they're doing. So as far as I know, what's going to happen is the little notch in it is going to be welded up, which is going to be difficult because I think aluminium welding is pretty tricky. But nevertheless, uh, a professional will do it. And then I think it's going to be sort of bored not to make it bigger but to clean it up or it'll be cleaned up i'm not sure how and then it will be coated in that nickel coating and then i can come and collect it so it's going to take about two weeks to do it's quite a long time but i also have parts ordered at yamaha i have the shift shaft that needs to be replaced and that it was going to take three weeks a week ago so now it's going to take two more weeks so if everything goes to plan and if i'm kind of lucky all my parts will arrive at the same time where we can throw the bike back together and enjoy it forevermore. But motorcycles, things are usually too good to be true or things don't necessarily go to plan. The sad part is, is that this is the route we take to go to my favorite motocross track. Yeah, that's pretty sad, isn't it? Can I have you? I can make some pretty cool jumps with you. Battery update that's worth the wait. 69%. <laughs> In the last week, I've learned quite a lot about two strokes because before that, I did a fair bit of research to know how to do a top-end rebuild and, and kind of knew all I thought I needed to know. And then I made the discovery that the cylinder was damaged and that had to put me on route to learn a lot more about them. Which is good, it's always good to know as much as possible about motorbikes, about engines and especially about the motorbike that you own. We're about to get overtaken by the big boys. XR. Oh, I like XRs. Okay, but back to topic. The way I see it is that I have three choices with my damaged cylinder and I'm going to take the first one which is having it repaired for a number of reasons. But your other option is to buy a completely new one because Yamaha do still make the YZ250 so you could just pop into a Yamaha dealership and order one and buy one and bring it home and that's all good and well. But as far as I know that's going to cost between two to three times as much as just having it repaired. So needless to say I'm not too fond of that option. And that's the off ramp. That's the off-ramp you take to get to my favorite motocross track. And we're on the Duke of all bikes. But we have pistons in my bag. There's good in this bad. There's my favorite motocross track. I've had some very good times and some very scary times there and actually only twice. But it's still my favorite. Look at it. It looks so good just, just resting. It's not actually open today so I couldn't go there even if I wanted to. Which makes me feel better. Bye! And then of course we have the third option to deal with a damaged cylinder which in my opinion is the most boring option which is entirely just a really bad pun because the third option is to bore the cylinder and to be honest this doesn't interest me even a little bit so i haven't done any research on it so this could all be completely wrong but as far as i understand it 
you would basically bore out the cylinder to make it bigger and in turn you would get rid of the damaged material and then you could just recoat it in that fancy nicosyl coating and it would be good as new but bigger so you would bore it out to something like a 270 or a 280 cc instead of a 250 i'm not too sure i haven't looked into it but this doesn't interest me because i love my bike the way it is i love it being stock so i don't need it to be faster i don't need it to be more powerful i love it the way it is and i think that it might be fiddly to find oversized pistons in the future for it but like i said i really don't know but i just don't like that option so i've done about 100 k's on this bike just today and to be honest it's been pretty faultless i really did think it would be too slow for the highway annoying on this road and just not the type of bike to do this on but to be honest most people are such slow drivers anyway that you pass them or at least keep up with them on the highway so it's been perfect it does lack a bit of grunt when bmw xrs come past you but other than that this is perfect you really don't need more than a 400 unless you're a, a spoiled biker which i really want to be okay we're one minute away and just over a kilometer away which is a good sign but i actually really do like this area this area is close to what they call the cradle of humankind which i think is where the fossil of the first human was found or some nonsense like that i don't care too much about that all i know is that they are pretty cool caves to play in which i like to go and see those well we're now heading in the opposite direction back the way we came and heading for home and we've got about 52 kilometers still to go the bad news is we're stuck behind a big truck full of grass which apparently is too heavy to go quickly that's frustrating but the good news is that my backpack is a lot more comfortable because it's much lighter we got rid of that heavy cylinder and a little piston and overall it was actually a very good experience the guy running the shop was a very nice guy and more than happy to show me around his shop and show me the actual process that he uses to repair these cylinders and make them good as new the whole shop just smelled like chemicals because that nicosyl coating is obviously a chemical process but he had v8s in there a porsche v uh, inline six engine very cool to see but he had about 20 or 30 dirt bike cylinders just lined up ready to go it's pretty amazing to see he's obviously one of the very few people who do that in my area and as we finally get to pass this truck it's been a pretty good day overall i've had a good ride i got to learn something new i got to meet someone nice and in two to three weeks we get to go back there pick up my cylinder and that is when the real fun starts but anyway thank you so much for watching reduce chaos please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you on the next ride that probably won't be this long Ooh, 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 ooh.